Hi, my name is Rocky Messing. I'm a senior program manager with the Office 365 Information Protection Team, providing compliance and e-discovery solutions. Today, we're going to do a deep dive into our advanced e-discovery relevance solution, which provides predictive coding analytics to help me to identify which data is most likely to be relevant in a investigation, litigation, or regulatory matter. Using our advanced machine learning techniques, we can help you to provide a proportional response to balance the costs versus the amount of relevant data that has to be reviewed by your attorneys. We will now do a deep dive into advanced e-discovery relevance, the predictive coding using machine learning that works on data in place in Office 365. We start off by setting up an issue. By default, there's a case issue that is automatically created. We can go ahead and rename this issue. And if we had any other users who we needed to grant access to, we could go ahead and grant access to those users, such as outside counsel. We also have the ability to go ahead and provide lists of keywords. Keywords are words that we want the reviewer to look at during the course of review. We may go ahead and put words such as privilege or confidential and highlight them in red so that way the user knows that these documents contain those words. Once we've gone ahead and set up any highlighted keywords, which is an optional step, as well as any issues, which we could have more than one if necessary, we're ready to go ahead and start the training process. The training process begins by performing an initial assessment. The assessment phase goes ahead and does a completely random selection of the documents in this collection. It has to be completely random in order to provide the defensible statistics that we are going to use throughout the relevance process. I would go ahead and click on the Add Files button, which will begin my process of assessment and allows me to tag those documents as either being relevant or not. The initial assessment will always be 500 documents. However, the system after the attorney goes through and says whether each of those documents is relevant or not, may choose or may give the user the option to go ahead and provide more assessment documents in order to make sure that the statistics are within the right range. What we mean by this is as follows. At the end of the process, we're going to see that we want to identify a certain level of recall, or in other words, a certain percentage of the relevant documents that we want to find that the attorneys are going to have a chance to look at. That recall level is done with a error margin. By default, the system will pick enough assessment documents in order to provide a error margin that is 10% or less. The error margin is determined based off of the richness of the data. Richness means what percentage of the overall data is considered relevant. So the assessment by picking a completely random set of documents will determine what the richness is the higher the richness, the easier it is for the system to find the relevant documents and therefore to provide the recall level with a lower error margin. The system will go ahead and give the user enough documents in order to reach that under 10% error margin. However, if the user wants to continue with a higher error margin because they don't want to look at so many documents, they do have that option. At times, when richness is very, very low, such as under 2% of the documents are considered relevant in this case, 
the number of documents required for assessment can reach a few thousand. These are times when the users may want to go ahead and accept a higher error margin. We'll continue through the process after the assessment is done. I can see that for this specific case, it required 1,385 documents. In order to find enough relevant documents within this set to give us a good error margin. We are now ready to begin the full training of the system. Training is using our active learning algorithm to help select which documents we want the user to look at. Each tra training round starts by the user selecting the training button on the bottom right, which will select the specific set of documents in sets of 40 documents at a time in order that the user can say, is it relevant or not? They will go ahead and they will click through the documents, selecting whether or not they're relevant or not after reading them. And when they finish coding all 40 documents in the set, they will hit the calculate button, which will take them back to the track screen. The track screen will always tell me where I am within the process. In this case, I can see that I've gone through five rounds of training, so about 200 documents, but the system does not have a good sense of what is relevant or not. The system is going to go ahead and continue asking me to look at additional training documents, selecting documents that will both help it learn what is most likely to be relevant, what is li most likely to be not relevant, as well as selecting documents where it doesn't have a good sense of whether or not it's relevant because it hasn't seen those types of documents yet placing them before the attorney or the reviewer for them to continue going through and selecting whether or not these documents are relevant or not relevant to whatever the issue is. The reviewer will continue to train the system by selecting the relevant or not relevant tags. And once they are done going through all of their samples, the system will tell you that it is stable meaning it has a good sense of what's relevant or not, and you can move on to the batch calculation stage, which will score all of the documents based on how likely relevant they are. This allows us to go into the Decide screen. The Decide screen gives us the information that we need in order to make a proportional decision about the data. For example, I am able to see on the right-hand graph the distribution of all the documents based on their scores from zero to 100, where the more likely to be relevant documents score higher. I am also able to provide as a setting within the system, how much does it cost to review a single document? Based off of this information and the statistics that were generated via the assessment, we are able to go in and select a certain volume that we want the attorneys to look at. So for example, if I select that I want to review 20% of the data collection, I can see that my recall level or the percentage of relevant documents that I'm finding will be 84.6%. In order to find that 84.6% of the relevant documents, it's gonna cost me $135,000 because I'm reviewing 135,000 documents. If I want to find more of the relevant documents, I simply need to slide my slider bar up, reviewing more, finding more, costing more. What this allows me to do is make a decision of what percentage of the documents do I want to look at and at what cost based on the risk of missing documents in this case. So if this is a case that is for example, a slip and fall case where the entire uh, case is only $150,000, I'm not gonna spend $176,000 in discovery review. I'm more likely to be somewhere over here, maybe spending $75,000 to find it, to find the relevant documents, but I'm only gonna find about half of the relevant documents in this case. It's a cost risk analysis that the attorneys are well accustomed to making. The proportionality tools through the Advanced eDiscovery Relevance Toolset allows me to come in, train the system 
to identify using the machine learning which documents are most likely to be relevant or not, and then only export out that data set that I actually need to review.